Hey guys, what is up? Um, we all remember the Power Rangers Samurai seasons, right? Season 1 and 2 where Mia was in charge of cooking? Uh, no offense Mia, but your cooking sucks! You burn every bit of food that you make! You burn dinner, lunch, and breakfast like it's ashtray food. No wait, I take that back. You burn it like it's a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, and I've seen it. In the episode Deal with a Nylock, you burned chicken. How can you burn that up? It's the easiest thing to not burn, but you go ahead and overcook it. And trust me, even Kevin did not like your damn cooking. Nobody did. I'm glad nobody ate your disgusting cooking, except Lauren. Lauren was the only one to actually enjoy your disgusting, foul food. Yeah, that's my biggest rant on the Samurai season. Her cooking was the absolute worst. And I can't believe Jane and the others had to eat that slop. I was just puke. At the side of her food. It would be like this. <clears throat> no, I'm dead serious. If I had a choice between puking up or eating Mia's cooking, I would puke. Nobody would want to eat that slop. PB and J omelet? Are you dis you are disgusting? Just Playing out disgusting. Oh my god, Mia. I hope you learn at least something at the culinary cuisine school. And I'm not and I'm not judging the actress that played Mia. I'm just saying her character as Mia was terrible with cooking. I can make eggs better than you. I can make scrambled eggs way better than you, Mia. Yeah, I said that. And I'm not lying. I can make eggs, bacon, sausage, and omelets better than you. Yes, I am saying this. I can make breakfast a lot better than your Pink Rangers says can never accomplish in a battle. That's always been my that's always been my main gripe with the Power Rangers Samurai season. Mia doesn't know how to cook. Even Mike admits when he says thank you, and when she says no comments, Mike should just said I don't care about your stupid comments. Your cooking sucks. But the writer of the of the of the season was too dumb to get Mike saying, "Your cooking sucks. Work harder. Don't burn food." Man, I hope Saban actually does a lot better with Dino Charge. Yeah, I haven't seen Dino Charge for a while now because I haven't hooked up my cable yet. All I've been able to do is just play Nintendo. But my god, Mia's cooking looks the worst and I would want to puke. I would want to puke in my bottle of soda right now. But thank god I've already ate breakfast. Hey, at least I kind of look like Markiplier with my hair do. I bet you guys think I look like Markiplier, don't I, with my hair do? Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to One Finger Death Punch. See, I just mimicked Markiplier, my best act 
for him. Golden ticket. Listen. And around the world, fishing expedition. I'm going to the Culinary Academy. Thank you, Mike, for actually trying. Mia actually looks at him saying, How dare you, Mike? Um, Mia, no offense, but your cooking actually does suck. Y'all one that enjoyed your disgusting cooking was Laura, Lauren, the second Red Ranger. Actually, make that, no, make that the third Red Ranger we've seen in the Power Ranger Samurai seasons. Actually, no, two, because Clash of the Red Rangers is a side plot. It's nothing but a gigantic side plot until see, season two, Super Samurai. Super Mega Force more for The reason why you don't hear nothing is because the batteries are dead. I can't use this as a samurai morph like this. Or if you want it backwards, I can do it like this. But I do like how Antonio was introduced into the show. He kind of looks familiar. I can't put my finger on him, but his character actually reminds me of someone that played in... He played Trent from Dino Thunder. That looks... If you look at Trent from Dino Thunder and Antonio from Power Rangers Samurai and Super Samurai, you will notice the resemblance. Just take a hard look at their hair and eye color or skin. And I'm not trying to be racist or anything. But seriously, take a while, take a good long look at their faces, and you will see the, almost the similarities. No comments, please. <laughs> well, I just. I don't care about your stupid comment, Mia. You suck at cooking. Why is that the only thing I'm concerned? And the other reason why I'm bitching about is that Antonio's morpher was taken from him when room for one more for one more came into play. When G decided to take Antonio's morpher that he built himself to connect to connect to, to contact the Octozord and the only way of translation to that Zord is Here's what I here's what I'm trying to say. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Give me five seconds. Give me five minutes. And I don't know why Kevin was bitching and moaning about his family in the... Hello, Antonio's arrival yeah. up in the next episode. Room for one more. And who oh boy, am I happy we're finally here. See, the advantage of Power Rangers being back on the air when I started doing the series meant that I could watch Samurai as it was happening. And I have been saving up a rant for four years thanks to this episode. Jaden vouches for Antonio and gives us more terrible flashbacks and really awkward smiles at the camera. Kevin is pissy about Antonio. He's definitely got some skills, but he's not a true samurai. It doesn't run in his family, and he hasn't any formal training. Um, family? Hey, Kevin, none of you people are Japanese! Oh, but that's not my rant for that little bit of elitism. That's snobby of him, but it fits with Kevin's character. No, 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 no. 
the problem occurs when Antonio goes to the command house and meets with Mentor G again. Antonio explains how, by studying the Octazord, he was actually able to craft a morpher for himself, particularly by communicating with it digitally. He Thank wanted you. his whole life to be a samurai. Antonio, it's just too dangerous to put you out there without the necessary formal training. If you don't have the training... But I do! Look, sure, I did it by myself, but I could hold my own out there and you saw it! Antonio, I'll hold on to this. <laughs> Who the hell are you? No, no, seriously. Who the hell are you? You don't even have a first goddamn name, mentor, and yet you get to dictate who is and is isn't qualified to be a ranger? That's his morpher, asshole! He's the only member of this team who actually chose, of his own free will, to do this crap! Yeah, that's something that's been bothering me about this team. This obligation put on the Rangers that's never really addressed. Sure, the Rangers express regret occasionally about wanting a normal life away from all this, but they treat the whole thing like it's a foregone conclusion. They have no choice but to do this. Their families place a massive responsibility on these children, and I do mean children. We see flashbacks to a lot of them as little kids and this job being thrust upon them. Every previous Ranger team was given a choice. Sure, some were in training longer than others before they became Rangers, but even they clearly chose the path they were on. This is all familial responsibilities that have been shoved onto them before they even knew how to spell. And before you say, well, Jaden gave them a choice in the first episode, it's been hammered into them all their lives that they have to drop everything for this. It is both their destiny and their responsibility to do this, and to do otherwise would be a betrayal of that destiny and the expectations placed on them. One of the themes of that Power Slash Ranger short film, apparently, was about child soldiers. I call it horse crap for every season except this one. These characters clearly have a lot of issues as a result of this, constantly overworking and berating themselves as a result of this responsibility. They're doing a hell of a lot better than many would, but it still was absolutely wrong. And then Mentor G comes along and gets to decide Antonio is not worthy because his daddy ran a fish market instead of handing him a sword and telling him to fight demons? Even Jaden admitted the time he spent with Antonio was the only time he ever felt like a normal kid, G. You, you deny that! Chance. At least in SPD with Doggy Kruger did not... Yeah, in, in SPD there was an episode that was never shown on TV that the Donald Thunder Rangers came through a war because... because someone from SPD... Not the SPD headquarters, but from Grum's side of evil, managed to get his hands on the three Dino Gems. The Tyrannosaurus Rex Dino Gem, the Triceratops, and the ter Pterodactylzord. The Pterozord. The... The... T the Pterozord, the Triceratozord, and the t rex -zord. Those three gens managed to get all the way in SPD when they were supposed to be destroyed at the end of Dino Thunder. How? Or is this like before the gems were destroyed? But like, but thankfully in, in that episode, Cat was actually able to re remake the Morphers for the Rangers in that episode. And then there's another side episode with the Dino Rangers, but with Trent in it this time. Where their Dino abilities are still active. Where their Dino Ranger abilities were still active. It was episode, I think, 38? Yeah, I think 38. Yeah, if you guys never saw that episode, you need to find it on YouTube and watch it. Trust me, it is well worth a look. These two Dino Thunder episodes, they are really a worthwhile watch. You, you will have a jaw drop saying, Oh, it's been a long time since we've seen the Dino Rangers. Yeah, that's something that's been bothering me about the Ranger history. 
that small cameos from the previous range of generations come back to show a little cameo and then explain their backstory and then the current ranger generation story to the past to the past ranger teams and help fill each other in on what what or what is happening what has or what is happening yeah and that's been all from Linkara if you know if you want to find this guy his name's Linkara a top the fourth wall Ranger status at times, he had good reasons to worry about their development or concern about the future with the Dino Thunder Rangers. You're some asshole in a robe who's a glorified butler for the team, since I sure as hell don't see you out on the battlefield. Actually, I take that back. Even Spencer from Overdrive, an actual butler, was out on the field more than you. Up yours, you self righteous, sanctimonious sack of grum. And yet, Jaden backs up this crap. But, of course, by the middle of the episode... Hey, at least at the, at least at the, end, at the middle of the episode, Jaden decides, Here, Antonio, you can have your morpher back. So, what was the point of taking the morpher? It was absolutely pointless. You just don't go and take somebody's morpher when it belongs to them and not you, G. Good God, do you suck at your job of being a mentor. You ought to be a villain instead. You should have worked for Xandrid. You should have been Xandrid's spy dog. Good God, you're a horrible mentor. Well, I can't be on the guy that much. I know I'm being hard on G, but seriously, taking somebody's morpher without their permission and just saying you don't have the necessary formal training, don't start that bull crap. It's not worth hearing you guys bitch and moan saying you have not seen Power Rangers Super Samurai or Samurai. Uh, I got Super Samurai. The complete season on DVD with all episodes working. And I'm pretty sure all the episodes I've seen are right. But here's what I don't get. Why Nickelodeon decided to put Origins Parts 1 and 2 at the end of, of Samurai Season 1. That would confuse newcomers. You have to put the origin story at the beginning of the stinking season, you dumbasses. You will fuck up the timeline and you will just think, oh, let's make the third episode the first and then the fourth the second. That won't work. you got to put the origin story for first. Like, if we never knew the origin story, we wouldn't have known who the Red Ranger was until we saw the third episode. But basically, that's what Nickelodeon decided. But I go by what's on the DVD and what's on the case. And it says Origins Part 1 and 2. And yes, I do have Volume 1, Season 1. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Why are you so mad about Power Rangers? Have you ever heard all of Linkara bitch about the Power Rangers Samurai? You'd be like this too. I completely agree with this dude on every standpoint of Power Rangers Samurai. It's not a good series season to start off with. It's not a good season to come back from, Saban. No offense, but you should have focused more on Dino Charge more than Samurai. Fuck Samurai, just go go straight on to working on Dino Charge. See if you have worked on Dino Charge. Woo! Boy, you would have had the entire season out on DVD. The first two seasons if you decided to do it. But every other ranger is telling Jaden, screw you, it's his planet too, and he knows the risk, so let him fight, and nobody tells off G like they should. All he does is apologize for acting rashly in regards to him. It's not likely it was just us. Yes, but that's what people...
Oh, and trust me, Mentor G has the goal and, and balls to say that the team chose this life of Ranger duty. No, they didn't. They were forced to do this job. You should always have a choice of what you want to do. You should not be forced into doing something that you don't want to. Do you agree with me, Linkara? It was all about. It's not all on you. They have chosen their path. You did not choose it for them. Um, no they didn't. They did not choose this path. We saw that they didn't. We saw Kevin have to abandon his Olympic aspirations and be pressured by his father into doing the samurai stuff. To the point where the dude obsesses over his training to the exclusion of all other activity. Emily's sister, who was supposed to do this, got ill and all she said was, Wow, sucks that you have to do this now, sis. Admittedly, we know very little about Mike and Mia's upbringing in this regard, but I get the distinct impression that since Mia had a van with the team symbol on it, that she probably had a bit of pressure put on her, too. I joked about him being... Actually, I think I know what Mia was forced and why she was forced into this, because I think she wanted to become a famous singer or a good cook. Yeah, she was probably forced into this because her dreams of being a singer or a cook wasn't good enough for her family. I swear, the parents that raise these children are real dicks. No offense, guys. I'm not being mean on the real life parents of these kids or these teenagers or whatever. I'm just saying that the actors that nev that we never saw as the parents, they were real morons pressuring so much responsibility on these kids. Yeah, and I've been going on for 22 minutes of this shit. I've been going on for two hours. But... We do know, we don't know very much about Mike, but I think Mia was forced into this because her career of singing and acting and cooking wasn't good enough for the family tradition. I bet her mother or father was forced into the ranger in the samurai rangers like her before Mia. And how come Mia's brother wasn't mentioned at all in this, in this season? He was mentioned in Disc 2. He ain't, a rock, he ain't a rock star. He's my brother. He ain't heavy metal. He's my brother. That's actually an episode where it explains a little bit about what... Mia was actually a good singer. She was a good singer. In the song, Every Day song, if you look at the third disc special features and go to the songs, you will find that she actually gets on stage with Antonio and sings the Every Day song. Every Day Fun song. So, for any of you guys who like to bitch and moan at me, make a video about it and just tell me what you think. 